So welcome to the Catholic Entrepreneurship and Design Experience monthly groundwork session. Thank you for coming. This month, we will be, be digging deeper into module eight, leadership. And we want you to think of these groundwork sessions as our small group work session. If we could be together in person, you'd know the, those assembled here as colleagues who bring their knowledge and passion for learning to share and challenge each other. This group gathers to collaborate, share best practices, and challenge each other to not only improve how we deliver seed material, but also how to challenge the seed material itself to improve. We'll begin with a prayer, and then we'll get our hands in the mud and know that this work will bear great fruit in the lives of our students and ourselves. So we will begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In the same Spirit, help us to relish what is right, and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. And we offer a special prayer for those who are suffering right now, who are sick, those who are afraid, and those who are uh, lost. Father, we offer this time to, to work together, and we offer this especially uh, for St. Monica. Pray for us. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. That's beautiful. So, my friends, I'm so excited. Tonight, we have, uh, we have a very special guest, but let's go over the ground rules real quick, okay? We have three rules, right? Have fun. I mean, why not? You know, life is hard. It's hot out. It's, uh, there's a pandemic. I don't know if you know this. So, there's a lot of challenges <laughs> in the world. So, let's have some fun first. And I think rule number two really uh, helps us to do rule number one, and that is to be curious, Ask questions. In fact, wonder is one of the five foundational principles of a culture of vocation of which seed is founded upon. So ask questions. Uh, and then three, we, we ask for a very simple thing that you do every time that you walk into, uh, that you pick up a fictional novel, walk into a movie theater. Uh, you do this thing, humans do this thing we, that's called suspending our disbelief. Uh, but we don't really grant that in real time very much to other human beings. So we ask you to grant us this. And so suspend your disbelief and let's just collaborate, have some fun. And this will be a, a fruitful work. So I know you can do it. Tonight, we are focusing on module eight, leadership with the subtext of leading by desire. And I love for me, like it stands out that this is about leading myself first. Right. If I if I can't lead myself, how am I going to lead my family? How am I going to lead an organization? How am I going to lead a classroom full of students? Uh, Got to focus on leading myself. And in this module, there are some really uh, fine pedagogical elements we're coming to discover uh, that are baked in. And this one, actually, this module just got a rewrite over the winter time. Uh, Luke Burgess was very intent on, on adding uh, an, an element. He plussed this up in a major way. If you haven't watched the 18-minute video on YouTube that uh, is all about how to approach Module 8, highly recommend it. And that is a, that's a video you can access. But tonight, we have a very special guest, one of our colleagues. Uh, he is, um, I mean, primarily, I, I love to introduce this person as my friend, but he is a husband and a father of three children. Liam is eight, Maxine is six, and Genevieve is four. He's got an immense background in elementary education. He's taught religion and social studies on two continents. I mean, raise your hand if you can say that. I can't say that at all. Uh, he's a graduate of the ACE program, which is the Alliance for Catholic Education out of an organization known as the University of Notre Dame. Uh, he has two master's degrees actually from Notre Dame, one in education and the other in educational leadership. He served as a principal at a K through eight school. So that's no small feat right there. And he's an instructional coach with National Network of Notre, Notre Dame Ace Academy Schools in Arizona, Florida, Indiana. And he has over 20 years in education as a teacher, school leader, instructional coach, and focuses heavily on changing and making an impact to school culture, school culture, which we know uh, is the highest level of capital culture. And so I'm very pleased to bring to you all my very good friend, Kieran Roach. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. 
Thank you, John. Thank you, Ada, as well. It's so great to be here. I mean, I'm super excited for that. And so, um, Jose, we, I, I live about uh, an hour north of Sonora, Mexico. So I'm still in the Sonoran Desert with that. But uh, so we're in, enjoying it out here. But you can tell I'm not, I'm not from here. I'm going to say span two continents. I like to say from the south, southwest is where I grew up in, in, in Australia and then came out here with that. So, Jose, nice to meet you. Are you, are you uh, I want to get a sense of in the way of, of uh, what background peoples are because um, my background is education. So I bring definitely an educator lens to this module and to this summer of this framework, which was, I hope to help um, with that. And, and I might do what we call an education, a whip around, which is we'll whip around the room. And if people just say, uh, just uh, what, what their place is in educator and as we see in the way of, for example, I can say, I've taught for 20 years. I'm comfortable with lesson planning and can create lesson plans for that. And you're open, happy to say, hey, I'm, a, uh, I, I'm doing homeschool. This is totally brand new to me. I've never taught before or somewhere in between. So um, to my right, I guess, is Sh Shannon, if you want to love to have you start with that. You're in, in my Hollywood squares to the right, if you want to. Okay. Hi, um, my name's Shannon. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. And... I'm, I don't know, maybe my 18th year of homeschooling I'm moving into. So I've got, um, I'm working through the SEED program. I think in May we stopped at like module six. Um, but my rising senior, I'm planning to finish this with him. And I've sent a big email out to lots of homeschool dads and business leaders in this area, hoping to um, bring some new people to the community and find some collaborators on the teaching aspect because I'm finding that my one student classroom here um, would be much enhanced with other students. So, um, but I, I have a healthcare background and I'm a PT on the weekends, physical therapist at an acute hospital. So business is, I don't know, I know healthcare business a little bit, but I'm really, all of this is very fascinating to me, especially the vocational, um, just the aspect of helping students learn who they are, how God created you to be and learning who I am. Um, anyway, I, I, I've really enjoyed learning a lot and my Michael and I will be picking back up, I think with module seven uh, at the end of August. So, Nice. Good timing. Great. And I have Liz. Liz, are you able to talk? If so, Love to hear your voice. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Alexander, and I'm sorry I don't have a video available today. Um, but uh, yeah, my I ha also have a healthcare background, and um, I have a college graduate daughter, <clears throat> and um, I. Like Shannon, I just think this is a really interesting program, and uh, we have our family has a homeschool background. So, our daughter was homeschooled for most of um, her um, grammar and um, upper grade years. Um, and so, I would just I I've, I have the teaching bug now. Um, I've always loved teaching, even in my healthcare background. I've enjoyed. Um, teaching and uh, I took it to the homeschool arena for almost 20 years and um, have um, taught in a variety of different um, settings, uh, you know, group um, co-op um, classrooms, etc. <clears throat> um, have led field trips, have um, I've done a lot of teaching, like I mentioned, in healthcare. Um, so I'm just really also interested in um, sharing the benefits of this program, especially the vocational aspect of helping young adults, uh, blossoming young adults, um, have a, a great uh, roadmap to get where they want to go and where Christ wants to lead them. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And Jose, you said at the start that you're at a conference at the moment in management. Are you in education or you got some other background here? Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm currently doing my PhD uh, in management. 
with the uh, emphasis or, or, or focus in ethics and entrepreneurship. So, and that's why, that's why I ended up here. Mm -hmm. And previous to that, I was an entrepreneur and uh, working on my own business. And my teaching experience is very limited, mainly workshops uh, in the past uh, couple of years around entrepreneurship. And when I was a little bit younger, uh, early in my undergrad and, and high school, in, in Catholic youth groups, organizing uh, workshops, three days, one day, one week workshops on, on leadership and bioethics uh, for, for uh, middle school or younger kids. Um, but uh, only workshops. So uh, very limited teaching experience, trying to now go into higher education. Um, so this is amazing. I'm happy to be here. Hey, well, welcome. Rebecca. I feel like it's cheating because I'm the colleague of John and Kieran. I work at Catholic University. As a staffer, though, not, I'm not uh, formally a teacher, although I do co-teach the kind of um, freshman seminar class on which the SEED program is based. And uh, not formally speaking an educator, but actually what I've done is a lot of nonprofit work. And I happen to have helped to found or in some cir circumstances refound a whole series of Catholic schools across the country. John, I had to laugh because technically I have taught on two continents because I, right oh. after college, I did two years of volunteer work. And they had me teaching English to little Italian kids in a first grade in, the, in Rome for a year. So it was not as a very experienced educator. And uh, I think I learned way more than the kids did. But technically, uh, and technically, there's two of us who can make that claim. Wow. Wow. Well, I, yeah, uh, I did. Uh, so I'm John and uh, I did 123 hours of my undergrad as a music ed major. And then I finally took my first college of education course and was like, no, this is not at all what I thought it was going to be. So uh, I finished with my music degree and um, but I have been helping high schools and middle schools to teach entrepreneurship for like 13 years. I started with an organization called Youth Entrepreneurs back in 2008. And it, it's my it's my passion. I absolutely love it. And um, I have, uh, you know, I come from a fairly meager background. So I had to have jobs, which was like throwing newspapers and mowing lawns. And then I had a mentor that taught me how to paint hot rods in high school. And um, so it's like I've always been involved in entrepreneurship and I'm an, I'm what I call an awesomeness evangelist. I love to tell people about things that I think are awesome. And so uh, that means, I guess that makes me a teacher, but um, so here we are. Yeah. Uh, thanks for, thanks for, I love Kieran, what I love about this and this, we're going to get more of this. So Kieran and I had a practice run today. You, you start with a whip around just to say, who is everybody, but you get more than that. You get, why? Like, why are you here? Right. And that I think is a great, I mean, that's how this, this module starts. So great job. I'm so impressed. I'm learning a ton. Well, well now it's great. And I, I love, I love, um, I love education. I, I didn't want to be a teacher. I was like, when my mom's in education, she elementary kindergarten teacher. And she said, you'd be a good teacher, Kieran. And I'm like, oh, I, I know how I treated teachers. And I was like, you couldn't pay me enough. And so <laughs> but, and so now we're in Catholic education. I don't get paid enough, and and it's good. So it's it's how how it is. But I love it. What fell fell into it, um, or couldn't escape from it. And uh, I hope also to know days that have love education. I hope that today I can uh, the, the lens I bring with this module is uh, it's going to be probably a bit more heavy, heavy around some pedagogy around teaching. But I think it's a good thing. And uh, feel free to ask questions as we go. With that, uh, I like to like set the ground rules and say that we can talk in rough drafts. I say that with our students, that you can say something and it can come out wrong. That's totally fine. We, we won't laugh too hard, but you can totally say, say that and reevaluate that at any time for it. And it's as long as you're asking questions and doing that um, for it. So, John, can I get you to – are you able to share, allow me to share the screen? Oh, oh great. It's working now. Yeah, got it. So I'm going to share, share the screen. Because I was playing my elevator music that you couldn't take over the share. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, wanna, I love to always model, and that's the one thing I want to um, really communicate a lot in the way of good educators model, 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 and demonstrate to, to learners what you want, that sometimes we feel like 
we have to just give um, just give them the question and then the students have to figure it out. But um, that, that's the worst thing you can do for students. So you really want to model and scaffold as much. So a lot of what we're doing here, I'm going to try and model what we're doing um, with that. Starting from here, we all, those that have access to the seed modules get this lovely folder in Google Docs. And so that's where we can go in and we can go into the seed folder and specifically we're going to touch on here this lesson guide. And so this is as you go into the folders and all of these folders are built out this way in Google, uh, this way. And so we should always uh, start your uh, prep as you go into around this um, lesson guide uh, part with it and to have a just good preview of this whole lesson. So it's good just to, to skim through. Let me get the view right under here. So you can go through and it starts, and each module starts in, in this same lesson guide format where it goes over the social teachings, the values, the key principles, materials, time, and it's seed. And what I love about seed is it uses this block analogy around that um, and how to, in a way that here's a block of curriculum to use. And, and so whether you are this home teacher that's taught, teaching yourself or if you're a teacher that's been around 20 plus years these block modules of the way the curriculum and seed it really lends itself to that and so it's best to review go through and each of the seed modules jumps in and starts with this here this this project um for each module and and what we we do with these in the way these projects we talk about is um, in education you might hear it a couple of ways is starting with the end in mind or sometimes what's yeah. called backward design meaning you you end with the end product first and then build the lesson so in this module in leadership the end in mind is having the students do a self-guided retreat and so that's the project that's the goal and you don't want to release that to them straight away and instead that there's these blocks that you build the learning up through these three blocks that we're going to review a little bit today. And then these blocks in seed are very customizable throughout. And so we can see that there's three blocks, block one, block two, and block three, all building the student up into this knowledge of what it means to be a leader. And so I'm going to touch on that for it with it. Um, for it. And so that's kind of the layout of every seed module in the way of that uh, for it. So it's always good to, to come back here and look at that overview. You've got this kind of like this overarching module with these blocks to use how you see fit. Um, I'm going to stop there and see if there's any questions. So it's always good to have wait time in teaching and learning. And so I'll, I'll ask if there's any questions. I'll check the chat. If you want to put stuff in the chat, great. Thanks, John. has the link to the module too for that. Please put stuff in the chat for it but um any any questions about like that layout and those that have been using seed are you starting to see especially shannon too now that you're six modules in this kind of general layout for it cool so we'll go in i'm going to go back to share the screen with that and so um here i'm just going to pull up um just some materials that i want to really touch on i'm going to keep referencing back to here and this thing called uh, Bloom Taxonomy. And this is big and this is a, a, it's really important to understand and I'll, I'll reference this a lot in, in learning that you don't just go straight to this create, which is basically evaluate phase or analyze. These are these what we call higher level thinking. And you can tell these by these verbs around design or develop or, or critique. And a lot of time we want to get students to these higher level thinking, but you as the educator have to support that through. And so all your job as an educator is to build that learning and build that support so they can get to this. And if they don't know the content, it's really important that they engage in the content in these lower levels first, where you're just defining, explaining and discussing. So a lot of the block modules should really live around this remember and understanding and even this apply is where actually they're applying to that project, which is a self-guided tour. So note that students aren't getting really to this create and evaluate or analyze stage. Mm -hmm. Now, there may be elements where some students, some, some 
are engaging in that higher level thinking throughout your lesson and they're doing that, that's great. But as an educator, you should really focus an instructor on this lower level of learning first to ensure that they're, they're comprehending at that level because that's that lower level of learning uh, with that. And so that, that's really important. So when I go back to, you, to these, to the seed and, and especially to modules and the blocks, we start here and to really think about this essential question, what is leadership? And that's why you'll see in here there'll be questions more around describe or, and you can see these verbs here throughout, describe and as well as um, constru uh, not construct but more describe and discuss. We can see that there's some discussion module part two and that's where that, that focus is in these earlier blocks that will build out. And so as we get into this first block, what starts here is that, that there's this discussion prompt. So if I, what's called that these are linked and this discussion prompt in education is what we also call as an anticipatory set. And it's good in the way of this anticipatory set to do an activity that everyone can engage in. And so I've highlighted here this quote and, it, and typically um, this block starts with a discussion with the students around the, this this uh, quote and what they think and we also use the term low stakes in that you want students to have opportunities to gauge in in these low stakes learning where they, they can't be wrong with it and so what a student shares here it doesn't matter and that we've scaffolded in the way of even the, in a simple of bold bolding certain words is helping the students you're revealing behind the students you're educating the student you're showing them guiding them through what it is that you want them to focus on, to, to engage with. Uh, and it's, it's not that you're, you're giving the answers, but, but you're, you're putting the guardrails up and you're supporting and encouraging learning. Uh, another, another great aspect of a document like this is when you print out a, 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 a worksheet, and we call this also a scaffold, in that it, it scaffolds learning or directs the learning. These are great, these are intentional that, that they're places where students can put their answers, that it's, it's boring to just to listen to um, discussions, but, but to really have the student go in there and experience and, and write down with this supported scaffold uh, different elements. So the more you can have uh, materials set up and directing the attention to the student, the more that they're going to, the, the management of the classroom but also to the, the directions for the learner is, is more clear. And so having a, a worksheet it is, is good and a, a properly scaffolded worksheet to, to coincide the learning with that um, for it. And so also, so along with these scaffolds, there's, there's lots of other scaffolds that uh, educators use. And sometimes you, you might see this notion of my favorite around is these Venn diagrams. And so Venn diagrams are way, uh, graphic organizers, the simple is the two compare and contrast one here, but there's, there's, there's many that you can choose to, to demonstrate here um, concepts and think of the, the Venn diagram as a way to, almost like a rough draft before you go to write uh, anything down as a way to pull that out for it. So in this first block, there is a activity that's focused around, let me pull that back up here. Here is this, is this um, discussion and it, it has a discussion where you can, um, that video that students can watch in, as well as this here is, is what it's calling as the as assignment or the as assignment of that activity and it talks about bringing in a business leader and a spiritual leader to get to this essential question of, of the lesson is what is, a, what is it that a leader actually leading? And that would be that, that prompt that you want to always come back to and ask for that because you're trying to get the, the student to, to be this leading by desire that it's yourself first. And so you always want to try and draw that out with the activity and the lens of that focus. And that's where 
with an, an activity, you can always start and model this activity here. So, so, and what's really cool about C is this is curriculums here. And again, this idea is trying to get at this starting with why and what is their leader actually leading. So you can use this video or if you like, you could use a, a business person from the community to come and you could share with them this prompt, what like starting with why or have them watch this video and tee up that speaker to talk to that. And that way then when the students comes and is working on this, this scaffold, I'm going to back here, that these, these questions here is the scaffold where you can have them write and you can give suggestions on them what to write. Or you can also create your own scaffold like that Venn, the Venn diagram that's posted here where you could compare a, the speaker and you would put the speaker in one of these circles and then the directions from the seed curriculum as you contrast a um, business leader with a spiritual leader. And it's always good, if it's especially in a Catholic school or if there's a patron of the homeschool network being a, a faith-based network, to, to compare it with the, the patron of that, of that um, either school or, or maybe it's a family patron you have for a spiritual leader. And you can compare those. And, and don't be afraid that in the first example, you actually give the answers to the student uh, and to your students because... Again, all of this is that modeling of what you want them to do. And when you see them do it and write it down, that's when you can ensure learning has happened and help fix mistakes along the way. And that the scaffold also could be a way that the assignment, if, if you are grading, I know we don't have many teachers on this call here, but, but the grading could come from like model the activity with the, with the scaffold and then release it to independent unseen work. So that they can do this same activity where they go and find a business leader in the community and another spiritual leader after you've taught and modelled how to do the activity, which always has that lens back to this main focus of the question, which is what is it that a leader is actually leading uh, with that? And so that's where block one is, is really how you can use block one with what's here or also adapt and modify block one and, and again, back to Bloom. So I'm going to go back to Bloom's here. That focusing here on this uh, defining and displaying, explaining stage around that. Um, so I'm going to just stop my share for a little bit to see if there's any questions. But is there any questions around how that pedagogy aligns with that with that block? Not, not for me, Kieran. Cool. Awesome. Great. So I'm going to go into block two with that. And so if we go into block two, and again, remember that end goal is that a student leading a silent, their own silent retreat with it in block two. And so this one is a really great way to, or we would say in teaching teach model fade in the way of modeling what you want them to do. And then um, in this module, the students are, are using a, a, a lecto divina prayer, which is just a, a great, a great uh, way of praying that our church teaches. And uh, with lecto divina, that it's a, it's a, it really is. And again, this is focusing on this discussion, having discussions, and engaging with students, getting them um, to be able to the end goal lead this themselves. So you can support and scaffold. And the best way that I found, with especially with lecto divina prayer, is to Share your own examples with that. And so there's an example here, but I like to start this block with sharing my own experience of prayer. And it actually goes back to when I was a first year teacher with that. And I was doing some Lecto Divina style prayer myself. And it was a prayer in the reading of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist said, oh, there goes Jesus, the son of God. We know, we know that reading and we know what happened, which was that his followers left and followed Jesus. And I was thinking that this time, here I am, this educator in um, Mobile, Alabama. I was teaching religion, and 
uh, in the way of trying to learn management. I had a class of 33 students my first year with that. So they left me alone. I can remember their first day, 66 pet eyes looking at me saying they've left me alone with this many with that. And I had to get really good at the classroom management. And so what I was doing about was I would put the names of students that were acting out on the board. And if you act out again, you got a circle. And if you continue to act out, you got X'd out. And it was three strikes for out. Then it was detention or a call to your parents. And I remember praying on this, thinking about this. And it was around halfway through the year. And I really felt like uh, in my prayer, in this Lecter Divina prayer, I put myself in the place of John the Baptist. And if I said to my students, hey, there goes the Son of God, would they have followed? Would they have left me because they respected me so much and followed and followed Jesus? And unfortunately, I, I came to the realization that that wasn't, wasn't the case, that I think that it was so, such a, um, the way I did the discipline was such problematic that and it created more just they were doing it out of fear or, or just they didn't want to get in trouble. And so I remember coming to the class and said, hey, I'm, I had this prayer and I shared them the prayer and said, I'm going to change the way that I, I do I do this um, and I'm going to write the names of the students that I see doing good on the board. And, and the students were like, oh, okay, whatever. They, they were doing whatever. We're here to learn with that. They have to be at school with that. But I remember that end of that day, I looked back when all the students had left and it was the exact same names that were on the board the week prior. And, and that was to me like I'm going to school, getting education. They say behaviours, language, and they talk about that. I'd read all of this, but it was just this real realisation that they just wanted attention, whatever attention it was, and they were getting. And that was just a, a big realisation. That's where I feel the power of this Lecto Divina prayer can come. I, I remember also when I was in college praying with Lecto Divina prayer and and the reading of Zacchaeus, and he was short in stature in that, in that way he had to climb this sycamore tree, right, in order to see Jesus. And I remember with this Lecto Divina prayer that um, it was like you could make a scaffold and instead of I would take out, you could take out the word short in stature, but that was what was stopping him from seeing Jesus and, and you could input in whatever it was for you. And I remember when I was praying on that to say, I couldn't even identify with Zacchaeus because he actually was doing something about it. He climbed the tree with it. And I was like, when I would, would take away, climb the tree, what am I doing blank in order to get to know Jesus? And I couldn't even fill in that blank with that. And so that was a, another personal prayer that I would share with, with the students to say, this is how you can, you can put that in. And then using these scaffolds, like finding readings like this and, and taking away where you can the short in stature and say, what, what are some things that maybe get in the way of, of you? Do you have pride or, or that way of saying that you can't see Jesus or that the excuses you put up that, oh, I, or I'm climbing a tree or it's like spending time 20 minutes is just I can't find the time. That, do I put these barriers in the way? Or can I climb my tree, put aside 20 minutes each day to, to see Jesus? And, and these are the things that are always teaching and modeling to students first before you release them out to do it till they know that they're ready to do it on their own. And, and that's that idea of this, again, they say this teach, model, fade, or an, another term um, that there's a group that has teach like a champion techniques used that I like is this idea of at-bats where you're giving the students multiple opportunities to engage in the same concept. And that's what really these blocks of seed allows you to do so at times you might feel oh is this repetitive no that's that's okay and you can continue to do this repetitiveness because the more you can get the students to engage in into these uh these ways and experience these and uh it is good and so think of a a, a baseballer up at the plate and that's where they have at bats that they that you give you swing you let them hit as many as much as possible, these low stake activities before we're going to release them to this self guided retreat that they're doing on their own. So you don't want to release them too early for that. And and this is also along the work with there's a, a gentleman called Frank um, Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence here. And this these theories of multiple intelligence meaning that there's there's multiple ways in which students learn with that. And so 
these are some of these here that that think of don't just be the linguistic, which is a lot with Zoom. That's what we have to do in the way of linguistic. But look at ways that maybe a student can draw their prayer or if, is there music they can interpret it with it or is if they can go out and bodily and experience it in their senses too. So, so that's where when you think of at-bats, Repetition is good, not always the same. And think of these ways of multiple intelligence, ways that you can engage. And that's what, again, see the beauty of these these um, blocks is to view these blocks as ways to have at bats and to activate multiple intelligence. That we went here from here in block one, which was a a video or readings and a discussion, to here to really experiencing prayer as a as, as that type of experiential learning. And you'll see, and we'll go down into block three, and block three has, again, back to this um, more more discussion and and ways of, of learning and, and engaging in that way uh, for that. I'm going to stop the share. There's some questions. I see some chat going on. Great. We're putting those links in the chat so that you can copy those out. Or if you save on Zoom, you can get these links in um, to you um, at the end of the the core too so or 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 really good t- teaching prodigy so uh pedagogy so so you can be confident uh, with the um those that are just picking this up on their own that that's what seeds really strong at in 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 the pedagogy that you know it's it's going well and so then this last uh block to this one here I, I i love in the way of these assessment sheets i when you look at this, this again, what we call a scaffold, and it may just seem like a series of boxes, but these three boxes are, are really important in order to help students in their learning. So when you go through these three influences in this activity, um, the best one is to like this model, do this first one for the student. Don't expect them to do that legwork without you having modeled. So the first one is you put the top influencer and you write down their qualities. Then the second one, you do it with the student or in, or together with, with the group and ask them to discuss with that. And then this last one, you could do this on their own to see if they really understood it. And, and sometimes it might take one or two modelling and then you can pull up and just um, pull up a whiteboard or a piece of paper and draw the boxes if you want to do them and and this is where you, you can assign that as the assessment, that if you are taking this as a grade, if you had something like this and you showed them the first example, work together on the third example, this is the one that you would collect as a grade when they did this independent on their own to see if they were doing it. If you're looking to grade, if you're not grading, that's great. If you just want to see, is the student learning, this is where you test as a, as a check to see that that learning is, a, is happening and that's, that's where I, I'm a, a big fan of, of scaffolds, especially English language learners who English might be hard for them. A scaffold is, is a really uh, great tool to pull out the learning so that the language doesn't get in the way of the learning, that even students that maybe are struggling to access and understand the vocabulary can pull out things. You'll be surprised what they, they can pull out um, during these the content. And so... Seed is a, a beautiful program. Whoop, sorry about that. That has lots of content. Um, and that's what I love, whether you've been new to teaching or you've been teaching for 20 years. These content, again, going back to seed, uh, to the blooms, ways that you can engage in the block level is around these um, making lists, stating, defining, describing, discussing, all of the, so those block parts should be around here starting to move to this apply and that's where that project is is the apply phase where they now go off and apply what they learn in this project of a self-guided retreat with that for it um i'm going to stop the share there but those are those three modules any questions about how to use that blocks and how to, how you can um i guess the idea would be too is that you could do these blocks and the time you make up the time right so it, if you only had 20 minutes, it, it's almost like you can build in that 20 minutes um, and use that the block for 20 minutes or you can extend it out 
or a 60 minute block and that as a way just as a way that, and that's either providing more scaffold more examples or with the scaffold change the way that they present the information they write it as a paragraph they present a play they draw the picture always again that at bats and leveraging these multiple intelligences for that uh, with it and any questions on, on those cool. And, and then just to cap it up, this is, again, another one of the power of seed would be is then this is where you get to also the capstone project and the Odyssey project. So you see there's some reference here throughout. So um, when you're in the lesson, and this is where even this, the, the, the journal reflection talks about this Odyssey project, the power of this here is going back to Blooms, this is the power of this Odyssey project because this is where that project lives in Blooms, in this create, evaluate. That's where you get to what's called mastery of learning. If a student's able to formulate, author, or create this Odyssey project, that's where you've shown enduring learning, that, that they're producing this on their own. They're, they're saying what's important to them. They're critiquing and defending and, and, and deciding so we don't jump into this create and evaluate until we give or until we give these opportunities where they're engaging in that learning lower. And so that's where your Odyssey project is really around this create and evaluate piece of bloom. So you can say that it's it's good pedagogy and why that project seems to be is is carried throughout the whole of the twelve modules or the the modules that build out is as in seed uh, because. Uh, it's that enduring learning, and that's what, and that's the one that actually is assigned the, the college credit grade um, for, it and why it's why it's done in that way for it with that. And so, again, this is, uh, and then this journal again. Think of that as another at bats, but also this is that it may see, and and these questions are intentionally scaffolded to get to that critical thinking where where because of the blocks and that that you're focused in on these lower blooms and 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 giving a lot of opportunities to gauge in content and to learn content um, when done well, you'll, you'll be very um, surprised with the journal and you'll see, you'll see the students reflecting on that. If you've, um, but if, if you've gone too much into the create stage too early, then, then the students, it's, it's like um, it, they can't engage. And that's where you also get students acting out in the classroom too because you've, you've jumped too high too soon uh, with that for it so um that was so module eight leadership with that so again um big takeaways is the the teaching model fade approach with that the end in mind with that and then leveraging at bats and these multiple intelligences that students have and again make, making that really fun for them and that you're not giving it away by demonstrating modeling that's actually good teaching with that, and if you do want to a grade or if you want to do assess learning, try and assign an independent type activity. And that way you can evaluate is, did, did I teach it well enough that a student learnt it and can reproduce it on their own? But before they get there, you need to reflect, did, did I actually teach? Did I, did I teach it in a way that they would learn? There's a, there's a lot of teaching, there's a lot of dis discussion, but what, what is actually being taken away by a student for it? Cool. Kieran, thank you. Nice work. Thoughts, questions. What uh, what did you notice or what stood out to you as we were getting that very high level walkthrough? Keenan, I just like to thank you. Excellent resources. Welcome. Yeah, I, I echo that. I think, um, you know, at the end of a school year, it's easy to just say to the kids, watch this journal, do this. And that's kind of, um, you know, as, as I pick this back up with my son, I want to walk with him more like that and model more and, you know, just do this together. Like, I, I love it. And I've done this before, but it's, good to bring it back to the mind and even see that with a program like this with juniors and seniors 
this is appropriate. And um, sometimes I get to be a little too hardcore and that doesn't go well. <laughs> uh, from, from my side, I really like that there's a, a good combination of different types of activities, right? So you have the videos, you have a uh, discussion exercises, you have the assessment sheet to kind of like go in, in reflection. So I, I like that the uh, diversity or variation. I think that's really good. Well, for me, the guy who, who dropped out at the last minute of being a teacher, uh, it's nice to know that we have sound pedagogy, that we have, uh, we passed the smell test. Like I, I've been at this long enough to know that you hand a seasoned teacher a quote unquote curriculum, they can take a brief look at it and know whether it's going to be useful to them or not. And so we, I feel like we've baked in some, some good things. And also there are, there's more work to be done, obviously. So we're, we're going to keep working on it. Before we transition to the next phase, I want to make sure uh, that, you know, first of all, we, we laud Kieran with approbation as we have done, but I will, I will add that. Thank you very much again, sir. Um, but then any questions about what he covered, we are still going to, I've got a couple things I would like to point out, but uh, any, any final and he's not leaving, so uh, it's only what? It's like 2 o'clock there, isn't it, Kieran? You've still got a full day of work left? Yeah, i got 40 minutes until happy hour. So. Okay, we got you still. So I do have a question. It's not directly about your presentation, though, Kieran, even though I agree, I agree, echo what others have said, that those are really good resources. And, um, and I love your retaking us through the logic of why to spend more time on the buildup, as it were, in order to get students ready for the for the more for the the dimensions of the education that we're actually more interested in, in a way. But you've taken students through this module, correct? With that, uh, more just the lens. I've I've done the lecto divina with students before, and I know that that has to be scaffolded well with that. But no, this would be just if I was to teach it. This would be the lens that I would how I would teach it. And the, the, way, the way it would be, I guess, um, in our Management 118 class, I, I could see um, we do some on leadership, not necessarily these areas. We don't touch actually on mimic desire, which I think we should because it's really good uh, mm -hmm. with that. But we, we do do that the first types of module in the way of a leader being someone that leading like yourself first and, and then... We do that. Instead. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, it's too bad our friend, David Friend, isn't here. Um, I was just curious to hear how some students who have already gone through this module, how they responded to it. Because I think the, the, the idea of lead yourself first is very powerful. But I think what's also powerful is giving students tools to understand ways in which they are being led or allowing themselves to be led without necessarily recognizing it. And I was just curious about what feedback there might be from students. Uh, that's, I, I, I love what you said there too, and that's really important too. And that's where seeing some of those activities, having that foc on the focus part of SEED where it tells you where to focus is really important to, to follow that. And, that. and even coming back to like, that this is an incarnational curriculum too, that, that you can bring that in, that this is the word lived out in it, which is really, really important. I think what's, what, what I see here is it, what, what I noticed in prepping for this, this session and really thinking deeply about the, the leadership module is that we, we spend all this time, you know, making leaders, prepping leaders, right? School is about creating leaders for something something in the future right and, and that's one of the challenges of education but as a leader uh if there are leaders that implies the inverse that there are followers right like we we are all followers of somebody we're all followers of christ we are all followers of these leaders and to to really apply the inverse lens on ourselves is completely novel right like it's not something that I've ever experienced in my years of working in, in the education industry. No one says, well, what kind of follower are you? It's like, we are a leader. You have leadership traits. We make leaders here. Well, but yeah, but in order for leaders to be there, we have to be, there have to be followers. And what a great moment, I think, in, in the C program to take time to be like, okay, who am I following and why? 
And when I really think about it too, how does that make me feel? Like, how do I feel about thinking of myself as a follower? Right? Like when you, when you reflect on your life, who did you follow? And I, I love, I've always been like, I want to be the guy behind the guy, right? I want to be the producer. I want to be the one who helps, helps whoever it is do better than they would without me. And I think that that's like, when I think about my M code, right? Number one for me is be central, but I don't want to be out front. I want to be in the middle. I want to be the one that's helping the whole thing rotate and turn because that's serving a ton of people. And so it's just a nuance that I think is interesting. Um, and I love how we bring this for, to the front, right? We're going to talk about leadership because you're a follower. And the leader's assessment sheet is that it actually forces them to sit down and be like, this is who I'm following. And what have I done as a result of following this person? I think that's wonderful. Um, so anyway, that's just one thing that really stood out to me in prepping for this, this session, everybody. I wanted to share that with you uh, to see if that kind of got you thinking about, um, think about maybe what we're doing here, what we're doing a little bit differently, right? And I think that's partly why Luke rewrote the whole darn thing. Like in December, Shannon, when you and Lise went through training, it was a different module. And Luke was like, I'm going to hit this with a sledgehammer and it's going to be very different. And it's it, partly because he was in the throes of, of releasing his new book, Wanting, which is about Rene Girard's mimetic theory. Mimetic theory was in there before, but he, he totally rewrote this thing. And I think it's beautiful and it's just, and it is good. And those are what we're looking for. Um, there are a couple elements that I wanted to, if I could, Kieran, um, I wanted to bring up with everybody. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Um, one of the things we suffer from as we're writing curriculum, anytime you write anything, you're, you're immediately dating it, right? Like you're immediately putting a stake in the ground, like, hey, this, is a, this, this happened close to the time that we wrote this. And hopefully you guys can see I'm looking in, am I sharing the lesson guide here? Yes. Okay, excellent. So like in the prompt itself, it actually has a link to this video by Simon Sinek. How many of you all have watched the golden circle of why talk from Simon Sinek before, before this? I watched it. How long ago was the first time you saw it? Maybe three years ago. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So this, this was an interesting, it was a TEDx talk that became a quote unquote TED talk, right? He did this, this golden circle of why talk uh, in Maine, I want to believe. Like that's the only place I can come up with that he, where he got that accent that I, you know, I listened to him read his new book, Finite and Infinite Game or the Infinite Game. He has this really crazy accent. I think it's mid-Atlantic-ish. A little bit of like nor'easter. I don't know. I, I would listen to him read the phone book. Um, but but this video is 21 years old. May 4th, 2010 is when Ted Ted Proper published it on their YouTube channel. It was in May of 2010. So it's 21 years old. Like the whole Mac and PC battle has completely flipped since then. Right. The guy that was the young Mac guy is now doing advertisements for PCs. I don't know if you've seen this. It's completely 20, 20, 2010 or, or, or 2000. Well, so I'm looking at it on the Ted YouTube site and it says May 4th, 2010. But I honestly think it's older than that. I really do. Because we were using this when I was a, a, a marketing strategy firm. This was pre-homework before the client could even get started on the assessment day. They had to watch this video and we were doing that in 2012 and it felt kind of old back then. So just, just a heads up, like there might be some translation that has to happen as always, right? I mean, th those students, right? They, like, have you ever asked them, why does the phone icon on your, on your mobile device look like that? Like, why do we do this? They don't know. Right. They just they just go with it. And I love that about young people, but they, they don't know. Right. So there might be some like cultural translation. And then one thing I've noticed in particular, when when you show someone the, the start with why video and then you ask them to um, to get get into like write your why. Right. Whenever somebody sits down and tries to write their why, you're going to get how. 
you're not going to get why you're going to get how. And I know this as a parent, right? And I know this from selling insurance. You never ask why you always ask how, because if you ask why you'll get how, and if you ask how you'll get why. I don't know why this works, but it always does. Um, so if you have students write out their why, which I would highly encourage you to do, look for how and coach them on that. Like, yes, this is, you're, you're talking about a, a, a how right now. This is a verb, right? And really push them to get deep into their why. Now, we used to have these intense arguments, right? So we would do, when I was at uh, Fervor Creative Marketing, we would do these assessments for clients and we'd have them for the first day and we'd talk about their why, how, and what statements. And we would dig and dig and dig. And then our job six weeks later was to produce a document that had a really well stated why. And we worked mostly with faith-based organizations and the arguments internally were always, look, Jesus Christ can't be every why for every single organization, even though we know it is. We know that your why is Christ. We know. We get that. It has to be a little bit more nuanced, right? And I, we would have these intense ar arguments. And part of it was because we were working with mostly nonprofits, and all nonprofits do two things. They raise money to fight poverty, period. End of story. That is all, right? All nonprofits are fighting poverty on some level, be it spiritual, physical, financial, you know, you name it. Na name your poverty. There's a nonprofit fighting to, to solve that poverty. So uh, just some nuances there, like be on the lookout. Like I love to share with people gotchas, right? Like if, if you can know the gotchas beforehand, let's, let's go. The other thing is this one is very timely, right? Like this gentleman, Nathan Apodaca, his life is materially different and it is due to mimetic theory. Like suddenly everybody wants to do that video that he did. This is the guy that just shot a selfie TikTok of himself drinking cranberry or cranberry juice on his skateboard on his way home from work that day. This blew up his life. And I hope it ends well. I really do. Uh, because he made a ton of money. I know I saw a post like he went and bought a house and his whole life has changed. And now like everybody's trying to mimic what he's doing and shoot, you know, ocean spray uh, skateboarding videos. I, I think that's much more timely. And it's a great way to talk about mimesis because then suddenly everybody wants to do what that guy did. Like suddenly I want to skateboard and drink ocean spray. That's awesome. Um, and I was thinking there's another, there's another video out there. I think we had it in here originally and then Luke jettisoned it. It is called leadership lessons from a dancing guy. If you've got a chance to see this, it is awesome. Uh, it's live real footage of a shaky hand video at like a music festival of this guy who's clearly inebriated, just dancing, just like hippie dancing. You know, he's in a different in a different plane right now. And a, somebody goes over there to start dancing with him in the video. And you can see this happen. And he like he like turns and sees this person dancing with him. And it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, let's dance. And then long story short, by the end of the video, there are droves of young people running to come dance in this group. And it, it's, it's, the lesson is leadership is not about the leader. Leadership is about the first follower. That first follower validates the leader. And I tell my wife this all the time. I walk into a room by myself. Everybody's like, yeah, I don't buy that guy at all. But if I walk in the room with her, suddenly they're like, wait, she hangs out with him. He must be okay. Right. This is the rule of the first follower and why followership is so important to talk about when we talk about leadership. So just a nuance there. If, you, if you're feeling gutsy, go watch the video. Leadership lessons from a dancing guy is what it's called. Um, and it, it, he's not fully clothed either. So it might not be appropriate in your classroom setting, but the concept rings true. <laughs> I love it when I make Rebecca laugh. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, in here, in the... Where are my notes? Come on, notes. Here we go. Um, we have a video, the alone together video, right? Let me find that. Where do we, where do we share that one? Alone together. And it's a great video, right? It's a great, great talk. Where is it? Here we go, right here. But what, look at this. This is what I want to show you, right? This is TEDx, Sherry Turkle, sharing her life's work. And of course, there's this guy, four, three, two, one. Skip you, buddy. Okay, so... Here's the, here's the cautionary tale. Look at the comments. Look at the comments. I'm here because of my assignment. 
Doing schoolwork on this right now, Law. Need to make a summary for a grade. Amazing, insightful pro. What an irony. Never been so connected yet. Ne- okay, uh, very thought provoking. I find it in crit- to still in front of anywhere in our increasingly dehumanized. Blah, blah, blah. The, okay, um, if you keep going, there are comments of other. I'm here because of, an, of my assignment. Laugh out loud, right? Uh, top there was like the, the things we need to do for our grades or something like that. Yeah. So this is a litany of people that have had this assigned to them. And then all they do is bemoan how they had this assigned to them and they've completely missed the point. Now, my thought here is to avoid this gotcha. Download it. Do you guys use YouTube downloader? I love this app. It is incredible. So it's free. Uh, it's actually a web app, so you don't actually have to download it anymore. You used to have to. And then all you do is you throw in the URL, and then it pulls the file for you. And then you've got it, right? So, like, if – and I – shoot. I, you know, I remember the days when you couldn't have YouTube in a public school, right? You couldn't have YouTube in a classroom because the network admin was like, that's naughty. We don't do that here. Now it's like, how are you going to get the Khan Academy if you block YouTube, dude? Come on. Seriously, you got to learn to teach your kids how to weed through the good and the bad. However, in this situation, YouTube downloader is your friend, right? Because the last thing I want them to do is fall into that trap where they're just scrolling the comments and they completely miss the point. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let's see. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is this. Like, so, so here's have students. This is Luke, right? And I've read, I've actually listened to Luke's book twice, Game Changer, right? Wanting, if you haven't got this, get it, get it on Audible. It is incredible because it's mimetic. Mimesis is like water for fish. They're just swimming around in the water. They don't even know. And then you're like, hey, how's the water? And they're like, what's water, right? We are swimming in mimetic theory. It's crazy. And it changes the way you handle, like think about people in interaction. So this is from Luke's book. And here it says, have the students look and describe what is going on in this image, which shows two different kinds of leadership. So let's do that, right? Let's, let's try that today here. So we're the students. We're looking and we're going to, what do you see? John, are you able to uh, enlarge that image for us? Gladly. We're all extreme close up. There we go. Thank you. Yes, thank you for saying so. So, so for me, I would say it's, it's a little bit of, of how uh, leading by desire when you have this transcendent approach or perspective, uh, it's kind of like aspirational. So you, your desire mm-hmm. uh, keeps growing. Uh, in the other way around, um, it's more based on maybe kind of like your previous experiences and uh, what you've been through, but n- not too forward looking or, or with that aspiration. That, that's how, what, what I would uh, gather from, from this graph. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Shannon, what do you think? What do you, what do you see? What's going on here? Well, it looks like without a transcendent framework, the desire just is all jumbled up in that corner. I mean, it doesn't, it's stuck. Mm. Oh, I like that. Stuck. That's such a good word. Who else? Lise, you always have such wisdom. I'm going to totally put you on the spot about all this wisdom that you normally bring. Oh boy. Okay. Wow. Um, a little <laughs> bit of pressure here. Um, We've been hanging okay. out. I'm going to be totally honest with you and tell you the first thing I noticed was a typo in the word imminent. <laughs> oh no. Um, but aside from that, um, You know, the cool thing about the imminent column is your your desires in the here and now. You're living in the present, uh, which is a great concept. Um, but the transcendent is perhaps 
the wiser choice because you're always shooting for a goal beyond what yeah. may be present or um, possible in one day, perhaps. Um, the transcendent also reminds me of <clears throat> how we perhaps um, lead to um, enliven um, a, a greaterness of, of, uh, of our existence. So it's not about just leading for um, um, a particular earthly goal. You know, our, our goal is um, inevitably to get to heaven, right? Um, in the in the Catholic oh. sense. So that's what kind of popped into my head. Thank you. That, that's I appreciate that, and I, I uh, I'll let you put me on the spot. Of course, I can't stop you. Feel free to put me on the spot anytime, Lise, to give me the retribution for that. Um, and hopefully, you can forgive me because I I love what you said, uh, Kieran, Rebecca. Any thoughts? I like like that idea of um, that there's this uh, intentionality then that um, as opposed to that is seeing that graph and you can see that it may not and that it's not completely straight so there's bits of it's some wee way that you got to figure out along the way um, and then and that's that is what I was um, drawn into in that the idea that there's something something guiding it and where. And what what is that? And it's like that desire there, which is um, kind of cool seeing it as, as what I visual for it. Thank you, Rebecca. I saw you reaching. You had a you had a comment. I don't know that I have anything to add to what others have said. All the comments have been so good. Um, I like Shannon's word stuck. But the thing that occurred to me, too, was that uh, on the left, under the eminent desires, we see what happens when we try to have it all. Mm. <laughs> and uh, that, that the greatness that I think the human heart longs for requires, as I think Shannon was saying, a transcendent goal. Mm. That, that's the only thing that leads us out of ourselves and, you know, and into something lasting. Nice. Well, so many things stood out to me. Thank you all for, for sounding off on that. Like Lise right now with my 12 year old, she's constantly negotiating for the future. She's like constantly trying to lock down tomorrow's breakfast when she gets to watch a movie, you know, and I was telling her like, Hey, be here. The present is a gift. Be here. And now that's why it's called the present, right? Like it's a gift. Be here in this moment. Um, and so that at least that stood out to me, right? Like there is this, there is value in, you know, in fact, we tell her, make a memory, right? Make a memory. Um, and then what, what Jose, you said to me, which is that this idea of aspirational, right? Like Catholicism itself is purely aspirational. I love it. Right. Because we're all, and I said this last week at a conference to like a bishop. I think this guy was a bishop. He's like, yeah, that's why we're all practicing Catholics, right? You don't get to be fully Catholic until you arrive in heaven and we're all practicing to get there. And so I, I, I loved that you said that, Jose. I think this idea of aspirational is good. I think there's, um, there's a blend of, of these two things that make for a healthy life, right? Um, the idea, though, like we also used to argue constantly because we'd have to provide uh, a quadrant of like an X, Y, uh, you know, quadrant graph. And good was always up and to the right in the graph. And we would argue, like, can we for once make the good quadrant this one down here, or maybe this one over here. If you look at any graph, it's always some measure of good over some measure of time and up and to the right is better, right? And it's like, well, it, it, yeah, I mean, you can skew it to go the other way, but for whatever reason, humans desire this. And I think one of the things that Luke was getting at is that if we are chasing imminent desires, we're going to do just like Parliament Funkadelic said, a dog which chases its tail will be dizzy. 
And in entrepreneurship, we're constantly hearing about how 80% of startups fail, right? I, and I've said this before on these, these calls, I attribute that 100% to sin because those eight out of 10 entrepreneurs are starting that business because of sin. They want money, they want fame, and they want to never work again. We are not promised these things. This is not our goal. <laughs> you are here to work, kids. And what you have is not yours. It's better to give it away, right? It's better for you in the long run, trust me. And so I think it's some blend, right? And I want to be sure and, and make sure that this conversation that you have with your students looking at these images is fruitful and robust. And I know there's some gotchas in there. I think it's some blend. But man, the words that Luke uses in his book, it was funny to listen to the person that was reading. It wasn't Luke at this point in the book when he talks about thick versus thin desires. But thin desires, this is what he says from his book, from page 171. Pusillanimous. I had to go look that up. I mean, talk about onomatopoeia. I mean, that word just sounds terrible. Pusillanimous. Small spirited leaders are driven by imminent desire. Desire that is self-referential, circular, internal to the system it originates in because all models are internal mediators. It leads to rivalry and conflict. At best, it leads nowhere. Yikes. Okay. On the other side, same page. In, uh, transcendent thick desires, right? This is what he's talking about. Magnanimous, great spirited leaders are driven by transcendent desire. Desire that leads outward beyond the existing paradigm because the models are external mediators of desires. These leaders expand everyone's universe of desire and help them explore it. Ooh. This is why I'm an awesomeness evangelist, because I believe that you can only dream what you have seen. And so we need to show you more things. He goes on in his book. I just thought this was interesting to really uh, talk not so kindly about the lean startup methodology, which we just covered in module seven of seed. Uh, so I'll let you read Luke's book, Luke's book if you want to know what he really thinks about lean startup methodology. Uh, it is good. There are good things in there, uh, but I wanted to make sure and uh, share that with you as another plug. So when you're getting into this one in particular, there's some, it's some blend, right? We are all practicing Catholics. We're all trying to get to heaven. I think uh, one of the things that I've taken away from this, especially is who are my models? And one of the things I want to inject into my models of leadership are saints. I want to study the saints more. Um, this is the kid who like would have never even thought, right? Like I read this, I, I picked up a book. I was like, I'm going to read a book by a saint. And it was St. Francis de Sales, discerning God's will for you. And it was perfect because it's like a hundred pages. It's very didactic. Do this, don't do it. Don't do that. That kind of thing. Um, and, and in it, he says, you want to know if it's God's will for you? Ask the question, does it involve sin? If the answer is no, it's God's will for you. Pure and simple. And the inverse of that is that God will not be concupiscent in our sin. Boy, don't I know. So anywho, I wanted to share that with you, my friends. And um, let's see, how do I get back to my Zoomer to stop sharing? Stop the share. Okay. Hey, John. Yes. Uh, can you remind me the name of Luke's book again? Of course. Of course. It is called Wanting. Wanting. Okay. Just one, one word. Oh, look at this. Okay. All right. So we do have... Yes, we have a little bit of uh, an etymological, etymological conversation happening in the chat. So the difference between imminent and immanent. So it's excellent. As, I put it out because as a non-English speaker, I was like, oh, now I have a big doubt, right? So I went and looked it up. <laughs> I love it. Well, what did you find? Please, Jose, tell us, what did you find? No, I mean, I shared the, the, the three definitions because now it was like, uh, I, I, is it imminent, eminent, or imminent, right? So I was like, wow, now I'm super confused, but there, there it is, just there. <laughs> I, I, imminent is more about time. It's a time adjective, right? Eminent okay. is to uh, describe a person, right? A, an important person, famous person. And then imminent is more about, uh, that is the one that you have in the graph, 
um, it's also an adjective, but uh, more about the spread throughout something, right? So uh, I, if the first one is about time, this is more about, uh, how would I describe this one? Uh, but about something you you have or, 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 or about placement or, or, or space uh, occupied. So thank you. It, this is what I find about Catholic converts too. Like they're very specific. They want to know the truth. They want to know, they want to read the words. They want to use the right words. I love this about, you know, as a, a, a an English language, technically an English language learner, right? Uh, a second, yeah. Good job, Jose. That's wonderful. And we will be sure and include that with our notes with our colleague, Luke Burgess. Uh, we love him dearly. He's a great thinker. Uh, no, but, and he, but I, I think, I think that the, 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 the word he used for the graph, I think is the correct one, or I think is the one he wanted. At the end of the day, I, yeah. I think you're right. I like also too the, um, his, um, when he explains about the, the minimal viable product in lean startups and how, how that in a way is, is like not transcendent being committed, and that you're just responding to that, to that need. I mean, it's, it's funny because you see the lean model canvas in so many, like it's so dominant now in business schools and entrepreneurship too. And that's kind of cool. That sets us against being like a principal entrepreneur or even incarnational entrepreneur, someone that this idea of transcending that there is a greater good, not just the minimal mm. product to make. And I think that's, I think it's a, a really cool insight and lands in, and in being Catholic entrepreneurial design experience, like being, being able to bring that out in, in this uh, program is really cool. It sets, it really sets it apart than anything else yeah yes you know what luke said about mvp right or, or it, it's uh it reminded me of that famous quote by henry ford right where he said if i would have asked the people what they wanted they would have said faster horses right like that is a transcendent leader and you know there's actually a patent if you look in the united states patent office there's a patent that you can put a fake horse head on the front of your your horseless carriage because they were so paradigmatically out of sight, people freaked out. They were like, where's the horse? So literally people would install a horse head on the front of their car. There, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a similar story with, with Edison and the light bulb, right? And, and how a lot of the infrastructure for, for electricity is replicated from, from gas because it was such a change and an innovation that they were afraid that people wouldn't accept it. So a lot oh, of the infrastructure uh, for, for electricity, uh, it's, it's copied from, from, from gas, from gas lamps and gas lights. Interesting. Yeah, I'll share it with you and because I, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, I wanna, please, Jose. In fact, put that on the forum, will you? That would be awesome. Yeah, let me, let me look um, for, for, the, for the article. The other week when we were at a conference, Andreas was talking to somebody that was in the financial technology, in, in the FinTech industry, and he asked, do you do the plumbing or the something or other, but I stuck at plumbing. I'm like, they're not plumbers, Andreas. He's like, no, 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 it's a metaphor, right? Are you, are you in the back end moving the ones and zeros or are you in the front end selling the product? And, and uh, apparently there were plumbers in the FinTech industry. Anyway, I've had a lot of dealings with plumbers this week, everybody. Too many dealings with plumbers. <laughs> so plumbing is on my brain. Well, this has been wonderful. Uh, thank you all so much. Any final thoughts? Uh, you know, anybody want to take the, the last words here? I'm humbled learning something new about new words I never knew existed before. Thank you, Jose. <laughs> That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, great, great last word. We'll leave it at that. We are all humbled, right? We are all grateful. Uh, it, we are all blessed and we all got a ton of work to do. Listen, we're here for you. You know how to get a hold of us. I'm John, my colleague Rebecca, and my thanks, my dear heartfelt thanks to my colleague Kieran for taking the brunt of this one and, and bringing it to light all of his wisdom. Jose, thanks for joining us from, from beautiful Mexico. 
And Lise, I know you're probably home and that's a great place, but thank you again for joining us and tell your lovely daughter that we missed her. She's been at the mm-hmm. last two of these <laughs> and uh, she's, and then Shannon dropped off, but that's okay. She's, she's busy. This is recorded. So we'll get this out and uh, we have our undying gratitude. Thanks so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Good night, everyone.